How's it going, YouTube? This is Skull, and this is my arcade cabinet. I know I've been teasing this for several months now, and I apologize that it's taken so long for me to get this video made, but it's here now, and I just want to show it off to you guys. Now, I want to make clear this is not a tutorial on how I made this or how I installed MAME or Big Box or anything like that. This is just more of a, a showcase of what it is. Um, so first of all, this arcade cabinet took me about six months to make. Uh, I made it completely on my own from scratch. I didn't follow any blueprints. I didn't have anyone build it for me. Most of it was just me going to Home Depot and buying the wood and the screws and the paint and throwing it together a little bit at a time. Uh, I'm very, very proud of it. And let me go ahead and show you what it all looks like. My apologies for holding the camera right now, but it's really hard for me to get an angle on the tripod. So, as you can see, this is a one-player cabinet. That was what I ended up going with. I just realized I really don't have anyone else who wants to play games with me, so why bother building a two-player cabinet? Save myself a lot of effort and money. Anyway, so we have six buttons, as you can see there. I don't really play fighting games all that much, so no need for eight. In fact, most of the time I only use these two, maybe these three. Uh, we do have this omnidirectional joystick, which is, I believe it's an analog joystick. Uh, it is sensitive to the um, to how far you move it, so you can move it just a little bit or all the way, which is really good for games that require a lot of precision, like flying games. Um, we got this nice trackball here. People don't really use the trackball in their cabinets. I do because I love Millipede and uh, Missile Command and stuff like that. Got this nice arcade spinner for games like Tempest and the like. Then I have these one, two, three control buttons. Um, this one completely exits out of a game and brings me back to the main menu where I can pick a different game. This is my start button, so whenever I have put a quarter in, then I'm able to hit that to start the game. And this one brings up the main menu. So if I were to just pull that up right now, then we have all of the commands go up. Then if I hit this button, it goes away. So yeah, a uh, very simple layout. It actually took me a while to figure out where to put the, uh, sorry, it's so dusty, man. It's really hard to dust this properly, man. Black, everything shows. Anyway, it took me a while to figure out where to put the trackball, where it was comfortable. Trackball, spinner, I absolutely needed these in my build. I did not want to build in a cabinet that couldn't play the games I wanted, so had to put those somewhere. Finally decided to put the button smack dab in the middle of the of the uh, control board. The spinner up here where it's out of the way, I can just lay my hand there and spin away to my heart's consent. And then the trackball actually, the uh, palm of my hand leans off of the cabinet just a tiny bit, which makes this actually really easy to control. So yeah, that is the button layout. And of course I got my quarters that you saw me in the intro pull out of the uh, coin machine, which is a bona fide coin machine. I believe it was actually used at a Chuck E. Cheese way back when, so I'm very happy to have that in my in my cabinet. And of course up there is the arcade marquee. It is lit up right now. I know it's not easy to see with all the studio lighting up on it, but it is lit up, and yes, it is inspired by Polybius. So I think I have my camera on the tripod set up so that it can show mostly the cabinet, but also my face so you can see me as I talk. Um, so actually, I actually have a button on the side of the cabinet right here. It's the power button for the computer. I do use a computer inside of this, not a Raspberry Pi. I know people like to use Raspberry Pi, but I have a computer with an incredibly fast SSD. Uh, and also this monitor, I built this cabinet originally planning to put in a CRT monitor to give that more authentic arcade experience, but I ended up just recycling one of my old computer monitors instead. Anyway. Let's go ahead and turn it on. It's not even a big computer. It's just uh, something that I got off of Newegg.com for like less than 200 bucks, I believe. It didn't cost that much. I just, I got it for the sole purpose of playing arcade games, so I don't need much because arcade games use more CPU than GPU, so I don't even think this has a graphics card. I think it's all integrated graphics with the CPU. Anyway, load straight up. Of course, I have to have the Polybius wallpaper as my background for my desktop. It's not connected to the internet. It has no way to connect to the internet, which means no worrying about Windows 10 updates, no worrying about unwanted pop-ups while I'm playing. 
and I do use big box as my front end. There's a ton of reasons for that, but most of it just comes down to simplicity. I use launch box and I paid a little more for big box. Um, I highly recommend it. I will be leaving in the description uh, videos for you to better understand what launch box is and what big box is. But long story short, they are a great way for you to access your games, especially if you have an arcade cabinet where you just move things around with a joystick and select using the buttons. So, man, I guess we're going to start Cube Quest first of all. <laughs> uh, so if, if you guys are wondering what the real Polybius game was, it was most likely this. So we are loading in right now. Um, this is a Laserdisc based game, so you will see Laserdisc imagery here. Anyway, so we do have our quarters and we do have a working coin mechanism here. Let me just drop it in there. But we also have... That doesn't seem to be working. I don't know why that's not working. <laughs> Uh, that's fine. Let's play a different game anyway. Let's go with Donkey Kong, the uh, original Donkey Kong. But you can hear the audio is good. I'm, I'm reusing PC speakers that I had on my old computer way back when. Uh, coming through holes in the, in the arcade cab right here and here. So, yeah. So, once again, we have our coin. Let's just put that in there. And we're all coined up. It was very important for me to have a working coin mechanism in this, just to give it that more authentic feel. But like I said, we do have a button combo. Again, not working. That makes me very worried. We do have a button combo um, that can let us manually add coins if I don't feel like going through the trouble of getting some. But regardless, let's go ahead and play. Now, funny enough, this game just turned 40 years old. Uh, it was released sometime in mid to late 1981. And uh, I'm not good at it, and I'm probably never going to be good at it. Um, but I enjoy playing it for demonstration purposes. Am I actually going to reach the top? I might reach the top. I'm actually going to reach the top first try. Well, I don't know if that's ever happened before. So yeah, okay, that was Donkey Kong. So let's back out of that. Um, so I have all of my games arranged here and I'm just gonna zoom in on this in post-production. So all of these games with a star on them are what I have marked as my favorite games. They come up to the top of the list. They're the ones that I know I'm gonna to wanna to go straight to and start playing whenever I sit down here. Um, so we got all the classics here. We got Arkanoid, we got Asteroids, Battletoads. Centipede, and this is one reason why I love Big Box, is because if you use Big Box, you get to see all the information on it, you get to see the poster of the game if there was one, and a screenshot from the game. So if we go down to uh, Missile Command here, that's the screenshot from the uh, beginning of the game, from the title screen, as well as the poster. Uh, Pac-Man, of course, classic Pac-Man, Cuber, uh, doesn't work so well with this omnidirectional joystick. You really need an eight-way joystick in order to properly experience that. But, I mean, this game, the, this arcade cabinet will handle The Simpsons. And right here, actually, for The Simpsons, for some reason, we actually get a whole video instead of just a picture. Complete with music, so that's pretty cool. Uh, TMNT, Tempest, uh, let's go ahead and go into Tempest actually, just so I could show you um, how this works with the arcade spinner. Oh, and now the credits work, good. <laughs> let's just go ahead and hop into it. So I have the spinner up right now. I love Tempest, this is, this is the game that I always go straight to when I visit my local arcade. Oh man, so this is why I wanted a spinner. You get complete control, complete fine control with where your character is and yeah. So that's a, that's a good example of why I use the spinner um, and how I would use the spinner. So let's go ahead and go to uh, Missile Command just so we can show you a game that uses the trackball. I don't know. Let's try Millipede instead. So let's hop into Millipede, see if that works. I'm out of quarters, that's why I'm trying to just go with the, um... oh, we got it, credits one. Let's go. 
So yeah, we can move in all directions. <laughs> I never said I was good at Millipede. I really don't know why that works for some games but not others. I've, I've really got to look at that. That's annoying, actually, but anyway, um... <laughs> anyway, you get the picture, right? <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good look. Oh, and of course the trackball works as the mouse, too, if you want, but I don't care about that. Um, got NBA Jam, got Quantum. This is a fun trackball game. I'll go ahead and show this off real quick, actually. But yeah, you can see how fast it is to move between games that fast. ROM's okay, gotta wait for the rest of the game to load. Once it reaches the tile screen, that's when I can start adding credits. Just did. And this one works entirely with the trackball. So you just, you draw circles, that's what you do. You have to close the circle, which is harder than it looks. <laughs> and if you hit the circle, everything just blows up, which is not what you want to do. But this is a this is a fun trackball um, game. This is one of Atari's last uh, one of Atari's final arcade games. They were just trying to get uh, vector games to to become popular. So this is a vector based game. And just the more games I try out on this cab, the more I find stuff that I like. And uh, yeah, there we go. That was Quantum. So I hope you guys like my arcade cabinet. I know I certainly like it. This was a fun thing to make, fun project. And yeah, I'm super happy to have it in my room now. So let me know if you guys have any arcade playing experience in the comments below. Let me know if you play arcade games at home or if you go to a retro arcade. Trust me, there's no better feeling than going to a real life arcade and playing some bona fide arcade games. Anyway, that does it for now. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more. Hey, it's uh, it's me from the future. Um, <laughs> the uh, the button combo started working again. I don't know why it didn't when I was filming. You know, uh, streamers curse. You know, if something can go wrong, then it will go wrong, right? <laughs> but yeah, if I uh, push those buttons, it keeps adding it keeps adding uh, coins. So, yeah. Yay, Missile Command.